All right, so now we've talked about comma separated value files, kind of their format. Um, let's look at how we can load it into our code and make a visualization using it. Um, but before we do that, um, there's one other thing, kind of housekeeping that I wanna do. Um, these are the files that I downloaded from Climate Explorer and um, I might wanna make some changes to them. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just stick them in a folder. Um, I'm gonna call this original data. And then I'm gonna make a copy of it and we'll call this modified data. You can call it whatever you want. Um, but the reason is I always wanna be able to go back to the original totally untouched. That way I can make sure I haven't messed anything up or I can grab stuff maybe that I deleted, that sort of thing. Uh, and you'll also wanna take really good notes with this stuff so you remember what all these things are. Uh, then the other thing I wanna do is I wanna rename these files. They've got these kind of cryptic file names. Um, so I've done some research and I know that this file is the historical observed data. Um, so this is actually recorded temperatures. Um, this one is projected into the future. So we can call this future projection. Um, it's using a, um, a model to be able to like a computer model to be able to do that. And then the last one's a little funky. This is historical data modeled by the computer. So it's sort of like back modeled um, using the same one that they use for the projection. So we can call this maybe historical projection. Cool. And then also I, this is the um, kind of explanatory file. So we'll just call this, um, you know, data info sheet or something like that. And then the last file, we won't use this yet, but this is um, historical CO2 levels. So already this is like way easier for me to quickly go in and see what I'm looking at and what I'm working with. Um, now we're ready to dive into our code. So um, there, if you look in the collection of uh, code examples for this assignment, you'll find at the bottom line chart template, which I have open over here. Um, this is all set up for you. So you don't have to do all the steps we're about to go through, but I wanna show you how to do this for future projects. Um, so this will run on its own right now. Um, this is the projected data from 2006 to 2098. So you can see it's loaded here. Um, and we're gonna use this as like a template to get started. So I'm gonna delete all of this stuff. And in fact, I'm actually gonna delete, let's delete everything. You will not need to do this, but I do wanna show you all the steps. Um, if you don't see this sidebar yet, you can click on this little button and it'll pop up. And you'll notice there's two like folders here. The first one is called libs, short for libraries. These are additional JavaScript. Um, so we have chart.js. We also have D3, which is another very popular library for data visualization. And it's gonna allow us to load our CSV file in a really simple way. It handles a ton of work on the back, you know, kind of hidden from us. Um, so those are in there just for kind of clarity's sake. Uh, and then this folder I created and includes my data files. I'm gonna go ahead and delete those so I can show you how to do this. Um, so you will need to be um, logged in and um, you probably will need to duplicate this um, and then you can go ahead and rename it or something. So let's call this CSV demo. Okay. Then um, I can click on this little dropdown once you've saved it and do create folder. And you can call this whatever you want, but I'm gonna call it data because that's what we're up to. So there's my folder. And now if I click on here, I get upload file. And um, this provides us a really simple interface. I can just um, drag and drop my three files. Now it doesn't work perfect. You can see that little check show up telling you it's done. Um, you don't get any other indicator. So um, if you X out, you'll see our files are over here, which is great. Um, and another really nice thing, we can actually look at our CSV files right in the editor and we can make changes if we need to. So if I click on this, um, actually maybe this one's a little easier to see. So here's my data, again, comma separated values. Super, okay. So now we're gonna go through the steps um, to load this file. The template provides a lot of this, so you won't have to do this every time, but I do want you to understand all the steps that go into um, how this works. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do is specify the file name that we wanna load. Um, we don't strictly need to do this as a variable, but it's gonna make it really easy for us. So um, this is in my folder data, and um, let's do historical observed.csv. 
So that's my um, variable for the file name, and then we can uh, load it. So the command that handles all of this, and it does a lot of work, um, is d3, that's the library, .csv, and then we put in our file name, and that um, loads it. And then when it's finished, it's gonna spit us out. And we don't need to talk too much about this part here, um, but basically when it's done, it puts us inside this section here. So between this line and this closing part and all the rest of our code is gonna go here. So all the um, processing of the data, all the chart settings and the actual generation of the chart all go inside here. We don't want to put anything down here. Um, if you've done JavaScript before, of course, there's other ways of doing this, but I think this is the simplest. Um, cool. So um, the first thing, let's just like look at our data. So we can use the command console.log, which is going to print stuff in the console over here, um, text, data, all kinds of stuff. And so we can just say uh, loaded data and then run it. So push the run button. And we get this down here, which on its own doesn't look like a lot, but you'll notice this little arrow. Um, so what I'm seeing here is this object, 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 object. Um, that's because our data is in this um, kind of nested format. So if I click this little guy here, I can then see each one, each item in our data set. So I can see also that the format it's in now is this key object pair or key value pair. And this is a lot like, um, if you remember the settings and stuff from chart.js last time, very similar idea, a colon, you know, the name of the thing, a colon, and then the value for that. So I could see here there's year and tmax, um, which is the, you know, again, I looked at the, the data that comes with this, the metadata, and it explains that this means the average temperature for that year in degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. So we can see our data was loaded correctly. That's always a good first step before you like dive into everything else. Make sure there wasn't an error. You do have to make sure to type this exactly as you see it. Otherwise, you will definitely run into some problems. OK, next, I want to make some uh, variables, one for the data itself that I want to plot and one for the labels. This is going to be the um, values that appear on the X at the bottom. Those will be our years, and the data will be the temperatures. And then we use this structure called a for loop. And if you've done programming before, this is going to look really familiar. If not, don't sweat it. Basically, it just um, goes through our whole thing, uh, our whole set of data that we loaded here. And um, we can access it using this value of i. It just does one at a time. OK. Um, so the next thing we could do, if we want, is just to verify again that this works. So we can do console.log loaded data at index i. And now we should be seeing, hopefully, why aren't we seeing anything? We should be seeing something here. Very weird. Did I type something? Oh, I typed something wrong. Ah, um, loaded data dot length. This is the, um, so we, I is going to go from the beginning of this list of data to the end of this list of data. Not sure why it's not giving me a, a complaint here. There we go. Okay. Um, this should also show you that, um, you know, like I never edit these things out because I think it's important. You see, no matter how long you're doing this, you're going to screw up. Something's going to go funky. Um, okay, so here's our data again in a very similar format as we saw before, but we can see it's printing one per line, which is great. All right, this is also helpful console.log to see what's inside your data. It helps you kind of like figure out what's going on. Um, then I want to grab the year and the temperature from, um, from each listing um, in my data, each row. So I'm going to make a variable called year loaded data at index i, and then we use dot, and then we can put in the value that we see here. So dot year is going to give us that value from our data. And then same thing, um, this is the mean temperature, mean meaning average, not um, mean meaning nasty. And this will be t max. Oops, t max. OK. Again, we could also console.log this. So we can see the result. Maybe we can comment this out. And I can see I'm getting values like I expect. 
which is awesome. Now, this may not always go super smoothly. We're going to look in a little bit at some things that we may need to change in our data to make this work. And um, then the last thing that we need to do is add um, these values to our lists. So I'm going to say uh, labels.push. Push adds to a list. Um, I want to add the year. And then labels.push. Oh, sorry, uh, data.push the mean temperature. And then when we're done, so once we're outside of this loop, if once again, I do console.log data, I should see a list that includes all my temperatures. And if I do labels, we should see the years. Awesome. So there's our data. And now we're um, actually just ready to plug it into chart.js. So um, I'm going to copy and paste this just because it's a little cumbersome. Um, so here are my um, options that I'm going to feed in when I make my chart. Um, and this is all stuff we covered before. We've got a line chart. The data includes our labels that we loaded from the file. Our data set includes this data. And then just some really simple settings so that it looks easier to see. Then the last thing that we do is use this chart line. Again, I'm going to paste this in. And basically all this does is it plugs in um, all of our stuff and makes a chart. And when we run it, there we go. Now we see it. So, um, you know, obviously there's a lot to be done in terms of styling this chart. There's a lot we could think about in terms of um, what we want to do with this data or additional context, but this is the basic process. We would um, upload our data into this sketch. We would um, load it using this D3 function and then um, create a visualization from it. So in the next couple of examples, we'll look at how to add additional features here. Um, but a good thing to do now might be to kind of pause and take a look at the data that you have, see what format it's in, see what those column headings are, and then try to load it and, um, and, and get that working. So um, good luck. You may run into some problems. If you do, don't sweat. You can certainly ask questions um, or just take a pause. I think that's a really important thing too. Like go walk around if things aren't working, take a break and come back. Um, but yeah, in the next couple of videos, we'll add more features to, um, to this process.